good morning good afternoon good evening from wherever you're watching from if you're new here karibu sana if you've been here thank you for tuning in so today it's a beautiful evening and i i'm so excited guys we can't wait to meet my other friends from uni so we're going for a dinner and this is usiu united states international university africa dinner alumni dinner so this is tanzanian chapter happening in tanzania we this hotel is serena hotel in the Salaam, tanzania so this is tanzanian chapter and not any other chapter we have chapters of different countries but today we are at serena Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and we are going to link up, network, connect, you name it. You find a perfect name. It's just for networking, catching up, linking. So this is happening after a very good four years of not knowing what is up with people, and so this is after. This is a meetup after four years. So we excited. Let's do this. Let's do this. We're looking for parking, and yeah, let's go in there and network. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and comment. Are you attending this dinner? How did you get it? How was it for you? Was it worth it? Let me know in the comment section. So I came to dinner with my siblings who have been to USU as well. So we are all alumni of USU. So we're just here to catch up, link up. You know, we just decided to come for this event. Like it's been a minute and yeah, that's, that's about it. Let's, let's get into it. I can't wait to see my longtime friends. You know, after uni life gets busy, but yeah. If opportunities like this come, you just jump right into it. Let's see. And we, we're here to serve food. We just got there and people were serving. And I can't wait to munch this food as well, man. You know, you know, munches, food. And guys, the turnout is amazing. Look at that. Guys, turned out. I love this. Unity is really important. And whenever you get a chance, just show up. Like, oh my God. I can't believe this. I can't believe I was just entering the room and I'm just like, wow. But it's a good thing. I loved it. I so loved it. it and it was worth it, 100% worth it. Look at that. The turnout is really great. And yeah, people, people are just here to enjoy and link up, guys. The network, you never know. And Kamakawaira munches came through, and you see, you never disappoint with the meals. Like if you're going for dinner, we do proper dinners. You say you does proper dinner, and bravo, kudos to Team Tanzania who organizes Maria and the team. You did an amazing job, an amazing job. It was well planned. Everything turned out so great. And so, guys. Watch the video till the end. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment.
I would like to give permission to some Tanzanian uh, USAU alumni who work for the government of Tanzania. We have uh, Ambassador L.C. Kanza, who is the Ambassador of the United, uh, United Republic of Tanzania to the United States of America. Ambassador Maulida Hassan, who is, happens to be the private assistant to the President of the United Republic of uh, Tanzania Diplomatic Affairs, current government. Uh, Mr. Eric Nkilangwa, who happens to work for the Foreign Services Office in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Ethiopia. Eric Ochaka, who works for Air Tanzania. For those of you who don't know Eric Ochaka, he would, if he was in the room, he would have, uh, I think, what, did Eric do 4.0 GPA? Yeah. And uh, Jerry Ngewe, who works with Eric at Air Tanzania. And we have Maria. Where's Maria? Maria works for the TTB, Tanzania Tourist Board. And uh, she did a major in tourism and she's doing an excellent job. And she's a committee member, uh, one of the organizers of this event. We also have Roderick Ochaka, Eric Ochaka's young brother who works for the Foreign Services Office, Minister of Foreign Affairs, East Africa Cooperation. And then we have uh, Mr. Kevin Masala Kulangwa, guy in the blue suit, who works for the government of Tanzania, special projects. Have I left out anyone? Yes, Samora Chacha, the director of uh, uh, policy research, Zanzibar, uh, he's handling the tourism sector. Um, have I left out anyone in the government? No. Ungano, no, um, not government. Uh, yeah, I think we're done with the government guys. Well, those who've done were currently in the corporate arena. I'd like to give a uh, very good recognition to uh, Big Brother uh, John Baptist John Baptist Gambo, who works for CRDB Bank as the head of corporate. Uh, sorry. The company secretary, the gentleman who gave a good uh, one of our first speakers for the night, and um, Neymar Rose Singo, who is the head of brand and marketing at Standard Bank, Mr. Orasa Sakikia, country manager of Micro Insurance Tanzania. Where's Orasa? Where's Orasa? Ah, there you are. Mr. Joani, uh, sorry, Ms. Juanita Mramba, Head of Sustainability, East African Breweries. Juanita? Ah, she's not yet arrived. She's going to miss the dinner though. And then we have uh, Esther Lugoy. Sorry. Huh? Ah, well, I rephrase that. Esther Ben. Esther will go and bang it. Maria. <laughs> you do the introduction. <laughs> Esther will go and bang it. Who are supposed to head uh, uh, for forensic? Mm -hmm. Serenity. Yes, she's doing a great job. We interact a lot in fintech and uh, the technology arena. She's doing a very good job. Uh, if you don't know, she has the answers to here. Susan and Esther is in blue and Susan is in orange. For those who takes the two, yeah. And then we have Cynthia. What? You seem surprised. Did you know I was going to mention your name? You have a reputation to maintain. Ah, that's a good thing. You want to do the introduction yourself? Okay, so I know. So I know I've been, I've put a reputation, you know, I'm very serious, you know, it's a lot, a lot, a lot, but I'm the CEO of the Rugem Tahaba Foundation, um, for those who know Rugem Tahaba, the late Rugem Tahaba, he was a media, founder of Cloud FM Media, um, he was also really big on philanthropy and helping young people and youth empowerment, 
which is everything that I kind of stand for. So it was a great, um, yeah, job to take because on one hand I have a media and corporate comms background, on the other hand I've been very heavily involved in youth empowerment, um, just helping young people like me who kind of get lost and don't find their way. So yeah. Thank you. Um, we also have uh, Alvin Swai, who works for Trigger Cement. He's doing a great job. My roommate. We had a couple of fights. Exactly. Eh? Yeah, I will not tell those stories. It's dinner time. Um, Margaret Como, uh, who works for Tigo Business. Uh, we interact a lot. Because uh, Wakandi and Tigo are very good partners. She's doing an excellent job at Tigo. But we also have, uh, I'd like to give a special recognition to Mr. Michael Ruta. He is one of the founders of the property, a company that started while we were still in school. Uh, that means missing a couple of classes. And yeah, he missed a couple of classes, but it's, it's a company that's doing an excellent job in property management, uh, finding property if you're selling or you're trying to buy property or you're looking for accommodation. And it's doing a very good job. It's mentioned so widely to insurance, property insurance, mortgage, banking and all that. And yeah, it's doing very good. And I would also like to give recognition to Mr. Elisha, uh, Distro and Marketing, Naked. Yeah, Naked, literally. <laughs> naked, it's naked. Uh, you're doing a very good job, Alicia. Keep it up. Yeah, who else? Left out. Um, yes, Nasikio. For those who do not know, she's been in backing uh, Arena for quite some time. She's worked for NIC Bank and she's worked for. NCBA, and she's currently at ILO, International Labor Organization. She's doing a very good job. She's managed to raise how much in dollars, please? One million dollars for the Kilimanjaro uh, AIDS Challenge. So, there's a campaign. There's a campaign for zero AIDS, uh, new, uh, new infections. So we're literally trying to get the AIDS infections to zero. And she's raised about one million dollars, and part of the fundraising is happened by doing, getting people to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, and they contribute to that. It happened. Have they come down? No. Oh, okay. So they all summited. For those who don't know, we have summiters in this room. Um, guys who attempt, not who attempt, who actually climb Mount Kilimanjaro every year. Yeah, including me. Oh yes. My big brother here, Kevin Masala Klangwa, who summited Kilimanjaro every year three times. Glenn Kapia and myself done Mount Kilimanjaro six, ti six times and I'll be doing the 7th of September this year. So for those who are interested in joining... Ah, sorry! Robert Matafu has also summited Mount Kilimanjaro. So for those who don't know what that feels like, it's spending six to seven days no, no, no. I will not do that. It's not fair. I will not do that. Mount Kilimanjaro. Where? For those. <laughs> yes, even those who attempted. Even those who attempted. <laughs> even those who attempted and those who submitted. For those who do not know what that feels like, it's good six, seven days without showering. Why don't we shower? Because even when you get cold, I mean hot water, it can cause, oh yeah, even worse. Even when you get hot water, it turns cold in less than four minutes. So it's really not worth it. You can wash your face, you can brush your teeth, and you know, and just do the necessities. But it's a very good experience. Being on the roof of Africa, it's a painful experience, but it's worth it because 
There's a lot of negative thoughts you tell yourself that I can't do this, it's painful, I need to quit. But you keep going, and when you get to the top, you celebrate like you know. I mean, it's the same experience we get in school. You know, you have to attend class, you attend with a group of people, but when on the final day when you're sitting for your exam, you're on your own. Whether you pass or you fail, that's you. So, for those who want to know or experience or feel what it is like, please join us in September. Karibuni sana. You can either reach out to Glenn, Robert, Kevin, or myself. Okay. Schedule, the practice, uh, all that will come through. Interesting enough, you, you said it was sweet. Is it sweet or sweetie? This one. Okay. You, uh, so, what's the nature of this relationship? You have my best. <laughs> So, at USAU we've had uh, a number of couples who have actually turned out to be husband and wife. I'm sorry for those who have had their hearts broken. It's part of the process, eh? Cindy, you, you endure. You endure and then you become commando. Hey, for those who have had their, their hearts broken a couple of times, you become a commando. Then you become a philosopher and then, yeah, you can share the experience. But I would like to give a special recognition to Mr. Benson Mengi and Mr. and Mrs. Benson Mengi. Ben is married to Esther Lugoy, who happens they own a company. Uh, Mia coming up, Mrs. We've been married for eight years now. Oh, no, this year will be the ninth, and we have four kids. So we have four years are you babies. Oh. <laughs> and we have <laughs> we have lost count. And we have uh, we, we have founded a company together called Serensic Africa. So Serensic Africa is um, IT company that specializes in cybersecurity and innovation. And we have won a number of awards and recognition, but it's the both of us, me and Benson, both USIU alumni. With four USIU babies, so we'll need discount for fees, because there are a lot. <laughs> Thank you. These days, when you make it to three years, you celebrate. It's not a job. Three years is not a job, okay? Eh? But they've made it to eight. Our parents could do 40, 50 years. Eh? I'm telling you. Yeah. No, the troubles. Yeah, yeah. Three, four, five months with Makari and Precious is ready. Magoroto. Lovely, special. One of a kind in Tanzania. It wasn't a church wedding or a mosque or anything, but it's very special. <laughs> And then we have Fred and Natalie. Natalie is Burundian. She's now Tanzanian, married to Fred Chabula. Uh, but we also have uh, Jason and Saviona. Cake. 
Everybody needs to eat cake. Dessert is good. No? It's not good for the tummy, but it's good for the tooth. All right, so we're celebrating US, USIU at 54, but I think it's also we're just celebrating being able to, to, to gather together again after four years, right? Um, I was supposed to have a candle and, and um, a lighter somewhere. All right. So please, uh, let me do this. So I'm not entirely sure what to do with this, but I suppose this is it. Um, and I had a very bad experience with one of those interviews. 
it was a group interview. We had to like do all these things. You know, we did all these things at school, the group work. But one thing that I, I learned then and I'm learning now is the teachers were teaching us how to deal with lazy workmates. But we didn't know this. Right? Have you experienced this at work? You know those group members who never work? Mm -hmm. I'm that person. Now in an interview, and you're doing group assignments, so it just seems like a lot of work. Anyway, I digress. I want to invite Nelson Suya to please come up and say a few words. Um, please clap for him as he comes up. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I hope I can speak without the mic because my voice is so projecting. Um, first of all, um, a big thank you for inviting us to come to your event today. We are really honored to be here this evening. Um, I was supposed to come with some of my director and managers, but they could not make it. It's a weekend, but uh, I'm here on behalf of my partners. And really, we are, we are pleased to, to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. Secondly, um, I think it's just to congratulate the university. I think 54 years is not a, um, <laughs> a small time. It's, it's really a, a fairly decent effort. Um, some of us, if I ask you a question, how many of you are 54 years and old? Um, I'm assured, and I'm, I'm very sure there'll be very few hands going up. So you can imagine uh, how long 54 years uh, is. So I think congratulations to the university for the great work you are doing. I think um, a big number of alumni working in different sectors of the economy, industry, so I think uh, is a testimony of the good job which you are doing. So I think congratulations big time. Uh, thirdly, um, I think there's someone who was talking about big five. They're only big four, not big five. Um, just to, to, to make sure we don't dilute. <laughs> They're only big four. Uh, Price Waters, Coopers, Deloitte, KPMG, and EY. So that's why we call it big four. Um, so maybe some are trying to, to catch up, but I think uh, we are fairly protected. The, the, the network uh, at the group, but I think uh, we are also energy, time, and dedication to build your personal brand. And and, and I think focus on that one. Um, don't just be a generalist. Do something which can define you as a person. It can be in your community. It can be in your church. It can be in your organization. It can be anywhere. But you want every time you wake up in the morning, people can associate you with something tangible. And that's why I'm, really, I'm encouraging all of you, me included, to build our personal brand and protect it dearly. Because the way the world is going, um, I think it's very important for you to build that one. The other point which I wanted to share with you, and I think it has been discussed, and I was reading some of the objectives of the university, is about expanding and building your network. So you as an individual, you as an organization, strive to build your network. Your network in this current world is your net worth. If you don't have a network, you cannot survive in this world. And I was really pleased to hear about the collaboration which the university is doing. Um, and, and I think there are different programs which actually uh, support that. Uh, hearing a lot of um, some of the good things the alumni are doing, um, which actually demonstrate that we are really building uh, a strong network. Being here um, is also part and parcel of, of building your network. So please strive you as an individual to build your personal brand, but also expand your network wherever you go. Because that is really what is needed. Um, I think um, maybe just to finish my, my quick talk, because I wasn't very sure if I'll be talking today, 
so I didn't prepare uh, for that. I think as you are all aware, um, our world is moving very fast, there's so much changes, so I think I have had a lot of ideas, people having their own entities and, and all that, so I think try to innovate whatever you do, whatever small it is, try to do something which is really better than what you did the other day. So I think innovation, innovation, innovation is very important as, as we grow. Even we in PwC, the way we did the audit 15 years ago and the way we are doing the audit today is absolutely different. The way we provided tax services 20 years ago and today is completely different. So I think embrace change, embrace technology, innovate, be creative, and always, always strive to provide value to your clients. Don't accept status quo. Don't accept status quo. So always strive to make sure that you are able uh, to enhance value to, to, your, to your client. So those few remarks, I'm very sure um, next time I will see a lot of application coming from the university to PricewaterhouseCoopers. Not only Tanzania, we actually employ in a number of offices worldwide. So be on the look and I'm very sure the caliber of the university, the education you've obtained, the experience, you are absolutely you are qualified to be part of the big four family. So I strongly encourage you and hopefully next time when we do the interview for you, you'll be part of the team. So enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you so much for Thank you so much. And just to clarify, You've been seeing on these things, we are the best. We have a new school of humanities and social sciences. It is the most modern campus building you can find anywhere in this region, possibly in the continent. That is who we are. So, thank you very much for inviting us. I want to invite you back, if you have not been back for a long time, one day, take a walk north. And when you get to Nairobi, look for USI. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we're getting those courses and now USC alumni can actually go back to USC, which is amazing. And um, one thing that could get us back to USIU, and I want to connect it, connect it back to our cards, you got this card when you came in, right? USIU Africa Tanzania Alumni Dinner, you got these cards? Can you take those cards? There's a QR code on those cards. Do you want to scan them? Just take a minute and scan those QR codes. When you're done, just let me know. I graduated. Who will guess? Yes, 1995. I'm class of 95. I always tell people I joined USIU in 93, but I never left. And I'll explain why I say I never left. Um, after finishing my undergrad, I took a break. I went to Ghana for almost a year, and then I came back to do my masters, I started, and then I figured out that actually most of the engagements I'd had were theoretic, and I wasn't getting the best or the most out of it, so I had to drop out. I finally did my masters, but not in USIU in Warwick, but all those years, I joined you, the alumni when I uh, came back, and I think in 99, I was having my chair for two years, I stepped down, somebody else picked it up, and then I was called back again, I did another state as chair, and then I stepped down again, and then in 2008, um, I must have been 35 at that time, I was nominated and called to join then what was what was called the board, 
and I've actually been on the board. I was on the board, I think, six, seven years. Then we changed to council and trustees. And so I spent 14 years in the leadership of USAU. And so, yes, I graduated, but I never left USAU. I still stayed on to help. Just so that you know, the board is a volunteer position. In fact, the USAU board is a give board, not a get board. And we love it. For those of us who have served on the board or now the council, it's been a sheer pleasure and honor to give back. Give back to the university, give back to the students, give back, even in the lecture halls when we are called, for those of you who like talking, you have the mic you talk. And we always encourage, if you are taking a trip to Kenya, you have a few days, please get in touch with faculty. They will always hook you up so you can go and talk and inspire the students in the classroom. I want to give you a story. Six weeks ago, a friend of mine was turning 50. I hadn't seen him for quite some time. He was one of those who went to USIU in the 90s, and a couple of us decided we needed to get together. So he was in Texas, but we chose San Diego as the place we were going to meet. I assumed that we were going to meet and hang out in San Diego, California. Um, but actually, there was a bunch of guys way back in the 90s. Um, some people used to come through USIU to go to the US. So they'd come to the, the Nairobi campus, and then, then we had a campus in San Diego and another one in Mexico. So anyway, we haven't seen these guys, one particular person for a long time, get into San Diego and says, oh, by the way, um, we are actually crossing the border. I was wondering which border. Because for those of you who know Tiguan, it's just next door. And so, went across, it was a bunch of eight guys, and we had a really, absolutely fantastic time. Now, five of those people were ex USAU students. Uganda, Zambia, Tanzania, Cameroon. It was myself, originally from Ghana, although I signed off as Kenyan these days. And it was just an absolute pleasure. Some of them who I knew when I was here, say, some of them I didn't. Now, what I learned from that trip was these gentlemen have bonded together like brothers. Because over a period of four or five years, they all ended up in San Diego and they were in school there together. Most of them had finished undergrad in Nairobi, did their masters there, and then got jobs. And over the period of 20 years, they've supported each other been to each other's weddings, they've been to each other's when the kids were born, they've given each other consultancies and jobs when the economy in the U.S. was, was terrible, and it was a total honor. This statement where we say education to go to taking places, is not a joke. I have met USIU people in very many, including, by the way, when we went to Tiguan, we were hosted by an ex-USIU graduate who works in Mexico. It was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And most of these people are doing very well wherever they are. When that game was being played, I looked through and see how many boxes can I take. I tell people, I came, I went to Kenya, I came to Kenya for a holiday. My dad used to lecture in Moy University in Eldoret. And the idea was I was just passing through, I was going to the US. And then, circumstances will have it, we realized that I wouldn't do well in North Carolina. It was, it was going to be too cold for me because I felt I was really freezing in Eldor. So the idea was just apply, get into some college in Kenya, take some credits and go to the States. Well, I got into USIU. I always say this, Irene's over there was uh, Head of hostels, resident assistant. She's the one who signed me, 4th of January 1993, to, join, to get into the hostels. And I had, I had so much fun, let me confess. I had so much fun, it was so chill, it was so nice, and steady, my studies were going so well. I stayed. Every year I negotiated with my dad, let me just do one year, then I'll only do three years in the US. Let me do two years, then I'll do two years in the US. I ended up, I 
was one of those with more than 3.5, so I actually finished your assignment in two and a half years because I had a high grade. I also was one who got, I got a director scholarship because my grades were about 3.5. And so it was easy. It was natural, it was nice. But then after that, having such an experience, I wanted to give back. So, USIU also gave me my wife. My wife is a graduate of 97, I think, or 98. Produced two who will be coming through USIU very soon in another three, four years. So, and if I look at my life, the only reason I stayed in Kenya was because I had the network. That network became my net worth. My first job, I was working midtown Nairobi, Mamangina Street. <coughs> A friend of mine, Agnes Mandai, she tells me, Chris, there's this new company that has started Swift Global. You should come there. You're such a salesman, you will do well. I went two days later, I interviewed, I got the job. I left Swift when I was sales and marketing director. My second job, there was a USIU graduate who was in Deloitte, who was given the job to do a headhunting. She called me, she says, Chris, to be frank and honest, I've looked at the job description, it is you. I will put four and five other people in there, but I know these people. It is you. And I went for the interview. I was employee number two in Access Care. In fact, we didn't have a brand then. We then built that business, took it to the stock exchange, and sold it off to Dimension Data. Same. My third job, Telcom. I was called by somebody who was ex USIU, who was in the government. When Orange left, we were looking for people to re-strategize. I was told, Chris, in the B2B, you're the guy who can do this. So, all my career, I have had USIU alumni, USIU people around me, supporting me and opening doors for me. But let me give another story. Those in tech or having tech startups or startup businesses will know something. The single most difficult thing to get is great talent. And I can tell you without a shadow of doubt, one of the reasons why I excelled in all the opportunities that I have is that I pulled people from USA. I pulled alumni and they always did me proud. Definitely in technology, I can tell you beyond a shadow of doubt. <laughs> USA graduates get the job done. To the extent that you don't have to feel scared to give a reference. You don't have to feel scared to give a recommendation. You don't have to feel scared to hire them. My, uh, my career has been built on the strength and the back of the fact that I was always able to attract great talent into all these companies which are very fast growing in technology. On the other side, I'm one of those who's always had what I call a duplicitous, duplicitous life. Whilst I was building my corporate career, I also had a very active career, or an active area, which was angel investing. Over the last 25 years, I've invested in more than 17 startups, most of them in technology. And I can tell you, again, beyond the shadow of a doubt, most of my co-founders, most of my partners are USIU graduates. One of our very well-known um, startups is called Zuri Health. Zuri Health, most of the people who work in Zuri Health, which is a health tech in, 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 in seven countries in Africa, are USIU graduates, including people that we've hired in Ghana, Nigeria, Rwanda, Zambia, USIU graduates. So, I'm living proof of the fact that the education there takes you places. I'm living proof of the fact that USIU graduates actually have their act together. Yes, there's a lot of stories about how we know how to party. We do know how to party. It's also a good thing. I can attest to that. At one point in time, one of my businesses was we, we owned pubs and clubs. And we had seven of them, the Tribeca, those of you who were there 13, 14, 
natives, Kibeka, Skylax. <laughs> we had all of those things. Okay. And we knew how to party also. But we read hard, we partied hard. <laughs> to the prof, when you are giving lemons, who was talking about lemons? <laughs> oh, John, JB. <laughs> when giving you <laughs> lemons, you take tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Start screaming, shot, shot, shot. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, um, I believe in working hard. I believe in studying hard. And I also believe in networking hard. And um, back to my Tiguan story, it was great to see people from different countries. Today, I believe on campus we have 74 different nationalities represented on the campus of USIU. Our diversity is about 17% of the people, the students we have, are from different countries. It means we can easily create model United Nations in USIU without going anywhere. What it means practically is that when you are in business, I'm yet to go to a country. Anytime I go to Zambia, I go to Rwanda, I go to Togo, even Ivory Coast, Cameroon, and I do a lot of my business in Africa. Nasiki, Nasiki Wamberia for USIU in international organizations.
struggling for some invites and to make sure some guests come through until late in the evening. So it's well deserved. <laughs> of course, you're making me write the email, but <laughs> it wasn't working. And of course, last but not least, Margaret Como, alumni in corporate world. <laughs> undertaken to put this event in together. I request you to join me in applauding the entire organizing committee. In the same vein, I wish to make a special mention of our very able MCs, uh, Cynthia and Daudi, who have been able to facilitate such a great evening. Thank you guys. To the USIU leadership, we also wish to commend you to your commitment to and continued engagement with the Alumni Association at large. We assure you of our continued support of the alumni chapter here in Tanzania. And we believe that uh, this will be a second of many more fruitful and engaging alumni events to come. I also wish to express appreciation to the members of the alumni who have shown up in large numbers, it is evident. I salute your active engagement in alumni activities. I appeal and urge you to continue enhancing collaboration and interactions. On a personal note, I also wish to appreciate the effort, the support and collaboration that you have all been giving me as your interim chairperson. Let me also make an appeal for your continued collaboration as we seek, this is very important, as we seek to strengthen this chapter and to amplify 
its influence and impact on our lives, on our alma mater and in the wider society as a whole here in our country. I thank you for your kind attention and wish you a very good evening. Thank you very much.